The size of the cache is always significantly smaller than the size of main memory, so a way is needed to decide what parts of memory go in the cache and where they go. This video focuses on a simple cache mapping scheme known as a direct mapping. First, recall that the cache consists of tagged lines. A portion of each line is a tag, and the remaining portion of each line is a block. This is the actual storage portion of the line. The storage portion of each line is equal in size to one block of memory, which itself consists of several memory words. In this diagram, we'll list one line in memory for each block the same way we are depicting things in the cache. So this is block 0 and block 1 and block 2. However, memory is typically addressed using memory addresses, and there are multiple addressable memory words within each block. But before I start indicating what those addresses are, let's make up some numbers for various sizes. Our memory word size will be 8 bits, or 1 byte. Our block size will be 4 words, or bytes, which adds up to 32 bits. Our cache will have 2 to the 14 number of lines. That's roughly 16,000 lines in the cache. That means that it takes 14 bits to refer to any particular line in the cache. And if you want to refer to a specific word stored in the cache, that will require 16 bits. Because we have 4 words per block and it takes 2 bits to represent the values 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we add those two to the 14 to get 16 bits per word. Finally, each memory address will consist of 24 bits. That means the memory can store 2 to the 24 bytes. But the cache can only store 2 to the 16 bytes. And 24 is a lot more than 16. So which blocks of memory go in the cache? First, Note that if we divide the 2 to the 24 bytes in memory by the 2 to the 16 bytes of the cache, that leaves us with 2 to the 24 minus 16, which is 2 to the 8, which is 256. So memory is 256 times larger than the cache. In other words, we can break memory into 256 distinct cache-sized chunks. Here is a zoomed out view of a portion of memory and the cache. And you can see that the memory is broken up into several cache sized chunks. Now I've just highlighted the first line of each of these chunks in green and the second line of each of these chunks in red. And I've done the same in the cache. And the reason for that is this. In a direct mapping, only the green lines can ever occupy this green line in the cache. And only the red lines can ever occupy this red line in the cache. And so on. So if you are the fifth line within your particular cache-sized chunk of memory, then the only place in the cache that you are ever allowed to occupy is the fifth line of the cache. So this red line in the cache must be one of those lines. And each of these red lines in memory can never occupy any other place in the cache except for this one particular red line. But how does the cache know which of these lines in memory it currently holds? Well that's what the tags are for. Whereas the block portion of the cache contains data that exactly matches the particular memory contents that it was copied from, the tag portion of the cache will contain addressing information. For this to make sense, recall that memory addresses are 2 to the 24 bits, whereas within a cache we only have 2 to the 16 addressable words. 
a consequence of this is that within each cache sized chunk of memory, the first eight bits of the memory address will be identical. In fact, I'll write them out here using hexadecimal. These first eight bits of the memory address correspond to the tags stored in the cache. So if at this location in the cache, I was to store the hex value 0 to meaning the bit sequence of six zeros, a one, then a zero, then that would mean that this particular green line came from this particular memory location. And if the tag for this cache line were four, then that would mean that that red line came from this memory address. Let's put all of this together into one final complex example. Recall that our memory addresses are 24 bits long. The first eight bits of each address will correspond to the tag at which that address contents will be stored in the cache. The next 14 bits of the address refer to the cache line. And then finally, we have two bits which determine the specific memory word within that line of the cache. Now remember that for a given address, we will actually store the tag portion of the memory address in the cache. However, the line and word portions of the memory address correspond to specific physical locations in the cache. So here are the partial contents of a cache filled with fake data. And simply by looking at these values, which are all in hexadecimal by the way, I can tell you what the memory contents are at certain specific addresses. For example, I know that the very first block of memory contains this hex sequence because that is what is contained here. And the tag indicates that the memory addresses start with 0, 0, and the line 0 indicates that this data is all within block 0 of memory. So this is block 0 here. Now if I'm very strict about the addresses, then the memory address that consists of 24 zero bits, which also corresponds to six zeros in hexadecimal, only corresponds specifically to this byte here, the hex value one six. The memory address 0000001H maps specifically to this byte containing a zero. And then the byte with four or five would be a bunch of zeros in a two. And a bunch of zeros followed by a three would map to the one F right there. However, for ease of notation, we'll simply use the address of the first byte within a given block to refer to that whole block in memory. The other bit of data in the cache that is also within this particular cache size chunk of memory comes from cache line 0 to A1. Its contents are FFFF0000. It's right here. The block number will match the line number and be 0 to A1, but what will the memory address be? We know that the memory address must start with 0, 0 because all addresses in this first cache size chunk start with 0, 0. That's why the tag right here is 0, 0. But what about the remaining hex values? Well, there's a bit of a trick in the notation here because I'm using hex to depict the block numbers and the line numbers, but recall that 
the line number only consists of 14 bits, which is then followed by two bits that represent the word. So I actually need to shift over the binary representation by two positions to make room for the word portion of the address. And so if I take the hex value and convert it to binary and then shift over by two, I'm effectively adding two zeros right here. And so now I have to regroup this all in groups of four to figure out what the hex portion of the address for the line number is. So this is what the resulting hex value is and that's what goes into the actual memory address down here. So what that means is that this particular 00, zero portion right here is exactly this memory address. But if I wanted to find out what this address was, I would have to add one to this, thus replacing the four with a five, and then this FF would replace that five with a six, and this FF would replace that six with a seven. If we want to find out where this last bit of data occurs in memory, we have to move forward a bit. So this is the first cache size chunk, and so all of these start with 00, zero in their memory address. So we would have to skip ahead a bit to find the portion of memory where all the addresses start with a 0, 05. But because we are looking at line 3FFF, that will correspond to the last line of the cache size chunk which starts with 0, 05. So if this is the very end of that chunk, then this data goes right there in that chunk here. That's going to be within this sequence. So if this is block 0 of this particular chunk, then this would be block 3FFF of that particular chunk. And the address would start with 0, 05, but then we would have to shift this over by 2 to find out what goes here. Fortunately, that's easy to do because 3 in binary is simply 0, 0, 1, 1. If we shift that over by 2, then we have two ones, and then Fs are nothing but ones over and over again. So what we get is an F, an F, an F, and then this last F got shifted to the left. We're left with two ones followed by two zeros, which is 12, which is C in hex. So this particular address corresponds to the 44 byte specifically. And if we replace the C with a D, that would refer to the 55. If we replace it with an E, that would refer to this 1-1. One, one. And if we replace it with an F, it would refer, refer to this 1-1 one, one byte. Even further along in memory, we eventually come to a cache size chunk whose addresses all start with 1-3. And so this is that chunk. There is a line of data here in memory but the second line contains this data because line 0001 in the cache has this data. The tag is 13. So if we start with 13, then all of this data corresponds to this memory location, or rather this set of four memory addresses and the exact address, at least of this rightmost byte, would result from shifting this one over by two to get four, preceded by zeros. And once again, we can 
increment this rightmost hex digit to address the other bytes in this block. So if the 4 becomes a 5, we're referring to the 4-4. Four, four. If it becomes a 6, we're referring to the 5-5. Five, five. And if it becomes a 7, we're referring to the 6-6. Six, six. So this mapping scheme is not terribly complicated, but it has some clear disadvantages. Mainly, what if within the chunk of addresses that start with a tag 0, 5, I want to read the line number 1. So since line number start at 0, it would actually be the second line within that chunk. So it would start with 0, 5 and have 0, 0, 0, 4 as the address of its rightmost byte, and I'll make up some data here for that. And I want to read this data for my program. Well, currently, the cache stores data with tag 1-3 in line 1. So I would have to evict this data from the cache in order to replace it with this data. And that would be true even if I'm not really using any of the other data in the cache. And that's the problem, is that we have a very rigid, strict mapping that doesn't allow us to replace the cache lines which are least needed. Instead, whenever I want to read line one of any given cache size chunk in memory, I have to replace what's there no matter how often I'm using it. This inefficiency is the reason that better, more sophisticated schemes have been developed.